Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to install Udo 18 on your silicon macOS machine. I'll be using Udo's official source installation guide and I'll have the link in the description. And if you search for Udo source install, you will get this page. The source installation is convenient for developers as you can stop and start the service. You have control over the packages that you would like to install and control over where you store Udo's files. So let's start with the guide. First of all, you must have git installed. If you haven't, just follow the link and download and install git for Mac. Next, we'll have to clone the repository. Make sure you select the macOS tab and we have two options for cloning with HTTPS or with SSH. For cloning with SSH to work, you must set up SSH keys with GitHub. To do that, go to your account, click on your profile, go to settings, select the SSH and GPG keys tab. Then you'll have to generate the keys and add the key here on your profile. GitHub has an excellent guide and there is already a link to the guide here. Click on it and just follow through with the guide. Go to the check for existing SSH key section and just follow with the guide. Now with the SSH keys set up with GitHub, we are able to clone the repo. One is for the community version and one is for the enterprise version. But do know if you have the enterprise version, you still need the community version as the enterprise version just contains the add-ons but does not contain all the necessary files. I'll create a new directory and I'm going to call it Udo dev. I'm going to enter that directory and I'm going to clone the repo. The Udo community version repo has been cloned and we can access it and view its contents. Let's go to the next section. Udo requires both Python and its packages to run. Now it mentions here that Udo requires Python 3.10 or later to run. But I've personally had some issues trying to run Udo using Python 3.13, which is the latest version. Therefore, I recommend you to use the Python version mentioned in this documentation, which is Python 3.10. To be able to use different Python versions on the same machine, I recommend you to install PyEnv, which allows you to install different Python versions and switch between them. Here is a quick demonstration of PyEnv. Using PyEnv versions command, I am able to list all the Python versions I currently have on the system. Using PyEnv install command, I could install a specific Python version, for example 3.9.8, and I could switch between Python versions using PyEnv shell and the version number. And now if I run Python 3- version, I could see that my Python version is 3.10.16, which is what I'm going to use for this tutorial. Now let's go to the next step. Udo uses PostgreSQL for its database, and we could install it by following the following link. Go to the download tab and click on download. Drag and drop Postgres to your applications. Open the PostgreSQL application and start it. Next, it's saying that you need to create a user using your username and creating a database using your username. But in my case, PostgreSQL by default created a user and a database in my name. So I don't need to follow the step. Next, we have the dependencies section where we will install Python packages. For this, I recommend you to use a virtual environment, which will isolate your packages to your specific project. To create the virtual environment, I'll be using both the pyenv and the venv command. I'll be first using pyenv to switch to the preferred version, which is already selected 3.10.16. And now I'm going to use venv to create the virtual environment. So inside the Udo directory, I'm going to write python3 m flag venv and I'm going to call the virtual environment virtual. Now we can activate the virtual environment using source virtual bin and activate. And we can see that the virtual environment is activated by the virtual text between the brackets. Now we can start installing the Python packages. Let's start by installing setup tools and wheel. Now we can install all the packages listed in the requirements.txt file by running pip3 install r requirements.txt. We can see that we got an error. To solve this issue, scroll up to see which package caused the issue. In this case, it's the Gevent or Gevent package. So what we are going to do is copy the package name and we are going to install it separately by running pip3 install and the package name. By doing so, we are installing the latest version of this package and not a specific version like listed in the requirements.txt file. We can see that the package installed without an issue. So what we are going to do now is open the requirements.txt file and we are going to comment out the given package in the requirements.txt file as we are having an issue with that specific version. Save the requirements.txt file and run pip3 install requirements.txt file again. 
and we encounter a new error which is related to greenlit so it's saying that given requires a greenlit version higher than 3.1.1 but we have greenlit 1.1.2 installed to fix this issue let's uninstall greenlit and install the latest version so pip3 uninstall greenlit then we are going to pip3 install greenlit which will install the latest version of greenlit in this case it's 3.1.1 which is the compatible version with given package so let's do the same thing now and comment out greenlit in the requirements.txt file save it and let's install the requirements.txt file again and we can see that it finished without any issues next it's mentioning other packages that you could install for example the rtl css package using npm which is required for right to left languages like arabic if you are planning to use pdf files within udo then you will have to install wk html to pdf package both of these packages are outside of pip and must be installed separately i'm going to skip these steps but i might create a tutorial on wk html to PDF. So now we can run Udo and we could do that by running the following command Python 3 Udo bin add on directory path we're going to use the default one and the D for the database name in my case it is the username Alex and Bloom we can see that the registry has loaded let's try to access the site by going to localhost colons 8069 the default user and password are admin admin and we have accessed the site let's try to install one of the apps for example the crm app let's try to access that app and we can see everything is working smoothly that's it for this tutorial if you encounter any issues please write a comment and either me or one of the viewers will try to help you thank you for watching